Hello there, welcome to Alfa Romeo, well, su objective survive save. Where we'll be trying to survive the first season of Alfa Romeo is probably the toughest start. You start with the worst car on the grid. You don't have a lot of good facilities here. Actually, you probably start with the worst facilities stuff for the car. With everything at level 1, except for the side center, which I believe always starts at level 2. So we don't have the best start, and we're going to try our best to actually, you know, get into a position where we can get the board objective done, which is just a 7th place, but it's still going to be a bit challenging because, as I said, car is bad. We don't have the best drivers in show here. He is basically a pretty decent AD average, has decent amount of control, so hopefully we won't be cracking too much. But he isn't anything uh, too good here. With uh, Boras, he has decent pace stats. He's lacking a bit of smoothness though, good control. So generally, we'll try and not, you know, crash our car too much. But as I said, the main problem that we're going to actually be facing here is the factory, because the factory is just, uh, as you can see here, a level one factory we're going to basically be upgrading this pretty quickly to level two so we can get that third slot which should help help us a lot in terms of keeping parts up and because of the fact that we're lacking drivers we don't have a lot of money and generally things are going to be looking kind of rough for the first five or so races i'm probably going to be skipping them unless something special happens that gives us points but we'll just be powering through them and we'll be focusing mainly on the development side here to get a car which we can get points with and then as i said trying to get the board objective done before we potentially get fired. So that is the idea. We're gonna try and do our best to survive with Alfa Romeo. Again, a team who is probably the hardest side in the game. And we'll try and do our best to make that happen. Now, first and foremost, our car is, as I said, the worst one. If we were to compare it to, say, Alfa Tauri, who has the second worst one, we are actually behind them, as you can see on everything. The only thing that we're beating them in is medium speed. So, uh, yeah, our car is severely lacking. We're a good 0 0.70 points behind them in low speed. We're almost a full 100 points. Well, we're actually 80 points behind in high speed. So we have a lot of work to do here before we're even competitive to the second worst team. With that in mind, we're going to jump straight into uh, development here. And for the first project, we're going to focus on two things. The Red Wing, because we do want to get our DRS Delta up. And we're also going to, interesting enough, up for the Red Wing here, just completely ignore the cornering aspect. We're going to get three things out of this. We're going to get top speed in the DRS, and we're also going to get some dirty air tolerance. The reason why we want top speed is because the rest of the we're going to make is actually going to remove a bunch of top speed. The DRS effectiveness is always just nice. And the dirty air tolerance here is going to help us overtake in the future. So we're going to get this one in the cooker for sure. And as I said, because of our manufacturing problems, we're probably just going to focus on bot ass mainly. We're going to put everything that we can on one driver, at least for the first... Uh, you know, two, three months. So we're gonna make a rear wing, we're gonna make an underfloor, and again, underfloor is basically the workers here. It does mostly everything. Uh, I have to check though, because I think I might have made a mistake with that rear wing and not turned everything to the bottom. But hopefully I did, because if not, I'm gonna be sad. But yeah, minimum lifespan for everything here. In this case, we are not gonna be caring too much about the airflow sensitivity here. It's mainly the cornering ability that we're after. So we're also gonna be turning down the drag reduction a little bit. And as I said, cornering ability for the underfloor is going to be the main thing that we're looking for. Uh, again, we're just going to keep everything normal. And again, lifespan a minimum. I'm pretty sure I did put that for the rear wing. But again, if I didn't, I'm going to be probably not too sad. We're going to be making probably three or four rear wings this season. So it's not a big problem, uh, particularly as I said, because we're going to be making more of them. And we're going to be making a combination here of the side pod and chassis because both of them do have to deal with engine cooling. And we're basically going to be making an engine cooling side pod which also has the benefit of focusing on mainly, as you can see, high speed cornering and medium speed cornering. We're gonna lose a lot of KPH from this though. So again, that is kind of why we wanna focus on our wing. In general though, we are going to be getting our points on tracks that has, you know, very low requirements for the top speed. We're gonna be focusing on first getting our cornering ability up, since that is actually the more important one. Next up, we are gonna make the chassis here going and uh, we're gonna design a new one. And the reason why we're doing side pods and chassis is because, well, both of them have engine cooling and later we're going to do the other combination of suspension and front wing. That is why we are doing things the way that we are. We could probably focus on the front wing a little bit more, but it is fine for now. So we're going to do this with the chassis and as you can see, we're getting an amazing amount of high speed cornering. We're getting a decent amount of medium speed, a good amount of low speed. We're losing, again, quite a bit of top speed here. So again, we, our car is not going to be very good for that. We're losing a little bit of engine cooling. But again, what we did with the last piece is going to make up for that. And this is basically how we're going to do this. Put it on normal and get it going. 
Now we are going to have to redistribute our engineers. And the way that we're going to look at this is that we're going to try and have these pieces ready for Melbourne. So with that in mind, uh, the chassis should take 10 days to manufacture. So we're going to have to move one engineer over here. So that we get in 28 days. And the side pods, basically the same thing here. Three engineers. Uh, uh, yeah, get chassis and side pod done first. Honestly, we can move one engineer back from the chassis because I think we can put it on the second day of practice. So that should be fine. And we will try and move that one down to 30 days. And I think the underfloor here is the other one that we will want to move down to. We can only get down to 31 days. So what we'll do instead is take the uh, the railing here, get it down to, I think it is 36 days. There we go. And then we can make one before Melbourne. So our first point scoring opportunity here is most likely going to be Australia. But this is going to be our basic starter here. We're going to be able to make a chassis and a side pod and a rear wing. Hopefully, now we're actually not going to be able to make a railway now I think about it, because we don't have the manufacturing capability. Uh, we're probably going to have to rush one of these, either the chassis or the side pod, to make up for it. And also what we're going to do here is actually go ahead and upgrade that factory. It's going to cost us 7 million, but it's going to be an investment that is more than worth it for this, because we do need to have a better manufacturing capability. The rest of the things here, we aren't going to upgrade. We're not going to touch the, uh, well, we could potentially build this one. But generally, we just aren't going to be touching anything. The stuff we have isn't amazing. The drivers we have, as I said, isn't amazing. But it's basically the only thing this team has going for it. With that in mind now, we're actually just going to continue and going to get everything kind of set up here with uh, the key staff. I probably should have done a little bit of change there to our pit training crew. But of course, we're going to do pit stop time. And honestly, I think this is basically where we're about to start speeding things along, more or less. But yeah, the development here is all going to be standard uh, because, well, mainly we are lacking in funds. And we're just going to have a quick look at where they're going to be wary. We're going to have to tune it down a little bit in the training aspect. Tired and we're going to have to tune it down a little bit more because to make sure that we're actually safe on uh, Sunday, we're going to need about 20% here, so we're going to have to remove one more. There we go. That's going to be a pit crew training plan for this uh, month. It's going to cut down times a little bit, but it's still going to be fairly slow. So we don't really have much to do now. I'm going to be, as I said, powering through the next couple of races here. And we'll see once these design projects are done, how we're looking. Not the best season open here. 13th for Bonas, 20th for Cho. Joe did also break two front wings this race, so yeah, control that kind of low. Already a bad start there with two front wings broken. Red Bull still in charge though, but as I said, we finished 13th. We did have potential for points here. Honestly, we just just got lapped. Uh, we were actually running a couple seconds behind uh, behind Ocon, but we would have potentially been up to the Magnussen. We had a very very slow pit stop here, as you can see for for us here. Both his pit stops were slow. So it's just a bit unfortunate there because it did have potential for actually nabbing points there in the first race. And it's probably going to be long until we get that next chance. So it's very, very unfortunate. But yeah, it is what it is. We all have a new ATR period again. And this period is going to go into the underfloor again. Uh, we are just going to acknowledge that because again, money is kind of, uh, kind of kind for us right now. So we are not going to be focusing on that. We're going to be focusing on our car. And as I said, it did destroy two front wings in the basically the opening race. So we'll have to see here. We probably should manufacture more, honestly. I probably should have done that before the race. But we're going to have to gamble on him not breaking anymore for the time being. Honestly, we have enough, but it's fine. So yeah, let's uh, see how we do at Jeddah. Here we are after the first two races. Um, we finished 13th and 15th. That's the best position so far for Bottas. And the board, well, the board isn't too happy with uh, Jeddah, but they were happy with Zakir. So we're still looking good from that perspective already. And as I said, the goal here will be to focus mainly on Bottas. Now, we have had a little bit of a bumpy start here. As you can see, we're on 1-3 front wing. That means that they're basically show has already destroyed two of them. We did both of them in uh, Bahrain, unfortunately, but that is usually how it goes. And we are going to manufacture a new chassis here. And as I said, we are probably going to need to rush one of these components. We probably should have the chassis ready because we'll do P1, P2 and Melbourne. And then we should have it for the day after. Hopefully, so we'll just make one normally. And again, we're going to be focusing 
a lot right now on bot ass mainly. So we're currently manufacturing a front wing from the ones that we destroyed. And unfortunately that's actually potentially gonna cause us a little bit of a problem here with the side bot and chassis design that are complete. So we might have to actually straight up just cancel that front wing, which is gonna suck in terms of money. But I think it is the safe, safest option that we have in order to make sure that we get the parts that we need made, made in time. So we're gonna cancel this front wing. We won't be able to get a refund. But as I said, we kind of are going to have to because that's the only way we're going to get to sideboard two in time because we're going to spend five times rushing one of these sideboards. It's going to cost a little bit extra money. But again, we do this so we can start having chances of points as soon as possible. Australia is one where potentially we could have a lot of mayhem. But that is also why we kind of want to try and rush it. Now, we are going to be making, as I said, suspension and front wing as our next moves here. And what we want to do for our suspension is, of course, invest a little bit in cooling. And we're actually also going to go ahead and make basically a low cornering suspension. And I think that is going to be perfectly okay. We're going to make it perfect fit for low corners. It's going to lose a little bit more of a top speed here. We're going to lose a little bit of the high speed. But we're going to get a large amount of brake cooling, a good 10%. And I think that is very valuable. So we're going to go with this setup. Now with the NGS we have, we kind of have to see when is the best uh, time here. If we can get done for Miami, we're going to have to invest a little bit more time. Um, basically, potentially, we could rush one for Baku. So I think we're going to do that. Uh, it's not going to be great to, again, damage the top speed for Baku. But we're going to be making this anyways. As I said, we're also going to go ahead and make a... a well, we wanted to make a... Uh, we won't have it for Baku, and that's fine. We're also going to go ahead and make a uh, from wing, of course. That two hand brake cooling, they kind of go hand in hand. And that is kind of why I wanted to focus both of them at the same time. We're going to make a front wing two that is focused on the low speed end because, again, we do need to catch up there. We are going to get 100 from the chassis. So if we lose a little bit in the high speed, that is fine. We're basically going to be making kind of a cornering monster. And that is what we're going to be banking on. Now, I am going to sacrifice a little bit of the brake cooling here. We, as you can see, just a tad. And. The airflow sensitivity could be nice to get up here just a little bit, but I think we're going to sacrifice that too and go with something like this. It's again, not the best that we can do, but it's going to get the job done. And we'll have to probably redis redistribute our engineers after the underfloor and the other project is done so we can actually get things done in, well, the window that we want to. We're actually going to get them finished before the next race to Melbourne. Side post manufacturer is complete. And we're going to keep that still open because it's going to be used for the rearing here and also the underfloor later on. We could emergency manufacture an underfloor here. It's not a necessarily a horrible idea because if we do that, we're going to have four slots ready, rather four parts ready for Australia. So it wouldn't be a horrible idea. It's going to cost us a lot extra of the cost cap and everything. But if we keep doing everything standard and we don't break uh, the budget, it could still be you know, a beneficial thing to happen. Now, we're going to immediately make, as I said, another underfloor with full CFD and MAO hours, because again, this is going to be basically the workhorse. Uh, we could invest them somewhere else, but this is just more reliable for long term. Again, it creates a really good base for us to work from. And that is the whole idea with this. Create a decent base. We could, of course, sacrifice, say, as you can see here, go ahead and sacrifice the, uh, the sensitivity. Get a little bit better in terms of cornering. But again, we do need to have a bit of sensitivity so we can actually follow the cars and get by them. So we're going to, again, just keep the underfloor balanced for now. And that is completely fine by me. And as I said, we're going to probably be designing a few rear wings because we do need to get all three of these stats kind of up on the rear wing. So we're going to go ahead and do this. It's going to be just a slight upgrade again. But as we keep on doing this, it's going to get better and better. And although it's probably going to take a few projects before we, you know, really get there, it's still fine by me. Now, this is going to be what we're working on for now. We have four engineers available. So with that in mind, in 38 days, we're going to have uh, Miami, Baku and 31. So we could invest all engineers into getting that front wing ready for Baku. Uh, we could do the same here for the rear wing. Could do suspension as well. But what we also could do is actually the underfloor. 
quicker we get the underfloor ready, honestly, the better. And honestly, Baku isn't one we're going to have a good chance of winning anyways. Because Baku is going to be, uh, as one might have guessed, a top speed limited track. And we have very bad top speed. We have a look at Miami instead. It's less top speed, more DRS and acceleration, low speed, high speed, which we are going to have a bit of more of a benefit for. But I think we're going to put all the engineers on the underfloor. Of course, it would be nice to get the front wing rear wing going. But for now, this is going to be what we're going with. Now, we're going to speed along here to the race weekend, which will allow us to get the rear wing done. And as I said, if we really want to, we can do if we want to be a little bit cheeky. Let's go ahead and manufacture that underfloor of ours. Uh, which is going to be a tad upgrade here. This basically just going to help with the medium speed cornering. But with everything on, on, on the car, it could definitely help us out. We could go ahead and emergency manufacture one. It's going to cost us, as you can see, 1.2 million extra. But again, we're going to do this. We're going to just gamble and see how well this works out for us. So everything now has been made. We have a new chassis. Well, it's not done yet. It's going to be ready on basically race day. We have a rear wing that we'll be putting on car one, which is Bottas car. We have a side pod, which we're putting on Bottas car. And we have the underfloor, which we'll be putting on Bottas car. And once we also get that chassis, excuse me, once we also get that chassis, the car is going to look a lot better. But right now, it is it's still lacking a little bit. We are getting there in the DRS. But yeah, we're going to need a couple more iterations, I think, of the parts to really start being able to, you know, fight the other cars. But remember, the chassis is about 100 high-speed Gs. So it's definitely going to help us there. And if we have a look at, say, Haas, which is probably going to be one of them we're going to be fighting with for the points, we're still pretty far behind. We're lacking about 100 small Gs, which we're going to get a lot of from the suspension, which we're going to get a lot of from the front wing. So once everything has gone through one iteration here, we should be pretty close. Once we get the chassis, we're also going to be pretty close in the medium and high speed. So we're getting there, but it's still going to take a little bit more work. But with the new piece that we put on, I think that we can go for Reef Q2, qualifying 15th here for uh, Bottas, which should, of course, help us a little bit with money. So we're going to speed into this uh, sprint weekend and we'll see where we stand. With the addition of the chassis here that we actually did get made in time, we're going to have a quick look at where we're going to be lying. It's going to be moving us up here, as you see, on the medium and high speed cornering. Going to lose a little bit out of the engine because, well, it does have a negative engine. But it's definitely going to help us out. And as I said, potentially it put us into more of an attacking position. And I don't know that I said sprint weekend, but I honestly thought we were at Baku, so that's my bad. But uh, we now have 400 pieces on Bottas' car. And hopefully that allows us to get a few more, well, maybe a chance of points here. Qualifying here went way better than expected with these new part. We actually got into Q3. And not only that, but we qualified 7th. So that is a very promising... Well, start, the main problem here now is that we are actually going to have a race where it's going to be rainy. That rain is potentially going to be very problematic, but it looks like it's going to start basically immediately, unless I'm reading this wrong. Uh, yeah, it's going to start basically immediately. So what I'm thinking we're going to do here is just go softs for both drivers. We're going to keep on doing full attack for the entirety of well, the stint, which should be less than 10 laps potentially. So we'll just set up our drivers as usually do. This is mainly what I do at the start, maximum pace, max fuel usage and the ERS set to deploy. We can do that for both. And again, remember the main reason why show and what is going to have a massive difference in performance here is because we have those four new fresh parts on Bottas car and we have none of them on shows. So but it's going to be kind of the key here and hopefully we can make it work. Now, once the race starts, what I like to do is uh, immediately activate this thing over here, the ERS battle assist. Now, a lot of people are actually wondering what this is, what it does. And if you press this little info here, it'll actually tell you what most things are. So ERS battle assist allows your driver to conserve some energy to be used when battling, either to overtake or defend. Basically, your driver takes control of the part of the deployed battery and can basically decide to use part of it to attack or defend as they see fit. So basically, it's an overtake and defend button in one. You don't have to micromanage your ERS anymore. Your driver will basically deal with that himself. But you can, of course, use deploy when you want them to be extra aggressive. And that is basically what we're going to do here. Now, Bottas starts in seventh. Uh, if he can hold on, maybe get in the arrest frame with Russell, Sainz, and the rest here, that would be amazing. But as you can see, there's already gaps starting. 
we've had a virtual safety car on the get-go and who has been causing problems. Hulkenberg and a Haas, and that should be both cars out, so that's amazing for us, honestly. Um, because that gives us a chance to point save even more. But honestly, with Bottas starting as high up as he does, this also gives us a chance for, you know, our opponents to potentially here take, uh, you know, get a better result than anticipated. So we're still just going to keep everything as it is. Uh, the ballast is on. We might want to tune Showdown already to low and rarely defend. He is running in the back there. So basically, Show, we just need him to not destroy the car. So we'll run a little bit more passively. But as it's going to be our all in card here, at least until we get the factory up and running. So we're just going to keep things going like this. And again, just go attack this. We'll tune this down once we're about a kilogram in deficit. We'll probably want to tune it down though because you'll usually gain fuel during rain. It'll be full attack probably the entire race. And again, we'll tune down the ERS once it hits about 40%. Now, seeing that the rain is supposed to come over in just three minutes, I'm going to do the first pit stop before, well, leaving. And as you can see, Bottas is actually fighting Russell right now, giving him a bit of a uh, fight for his money. Uh, again, we are... We don't want to tune Bottas up just yet because, well, risks. How quickly is this rain increasing? No uh, pretty quick, honestly. Do we want to send Bottas in right away? Probably not. Uh, we could gamble and send a show in because show is basically still uh, running in the back. So we'll have show pit here uh, onto the Intis immediately. Could benefit him, could also backfire horribly, but basically we are just... Uh, you know, pitting him while it's still raining, and this should ensure also that Bonas will have a, a clean pit stop. We will keep him on attack though, we'll put him on neutral, and we will be calling Bonas in now for his pit stop as well. And as long as we don't cook these hinters, we sh are probably gonna need another pit stop, but we should be able to run kind of an aggressive enough strategy where points is definitely on the table, provided we don't get hang up too far in the pits there, up into fifth. And Perez still hasn't pitted, so this is looking very, very promising already. But uh, we'll keep things going, we'll do our best. And for these tires, you don't, can't really overheat them because they'll lose a lot, so we can't really get close to 105. We really want to keep them under 100 degrees so we don't lose too much of uh, the performance here. So we'll be tuning both of them down to aggressive. Might even need to tune them down to standard as we go. The Bottas is now in fifth. We're probably going to have to, as you can see, a pit again. So I'll be back once we get there. We have a virtual safety car here, and well, Joe is the force. Again, we are running him on less pressure strategy, but even then, That's he did the lock up and, and the car leaving a bit of paint on that. hit the hit the wall so quickly that basically the uh, the camera turned away. That's probably going to be quite a bit of damage. So. I'm not looking forward to this. Uh, I don't think we will be pitting just yet. We could, but we'd come at behind all of these. Probably even down to, well, Ocon Magnussen. Probably come out ahead of Ocon. Uh, we could pit, of course. But we are going to have a dry, yeah, we're going to have a dry period here. So it's better to probably just pit during this dry period. Uh, but yeah, that's not the... Uh, that's not a great sign, honestly. Uh, unfortunately, that show running kind of, as I said, lower chance of incidents, and he still locks up and sends it into the walls. So we'll try and do our best here. Protects us against signs, uh, protects us against the rest of the crew, but honestly, we're probably going to keep on falling backwards. Now, Albon and Ocon probably will not be overtaking us, but signs for sure will. So seventh is probably going to be where we're at in just a second. A lot of the other cars are actually pitting. The rest of us pitted. We've been overtaken by signs. We are really burning these tires now because it's dry. But we're doing that because I'm planning to just pit right now. And we kind of are going to have to. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten another safety car that we can take advantage of. Verstappen is pitting. Again, a lot of these guys are pitting. So we're going to take the opportunity here to just do it ourselves. And we are going to come out, I think, ahead of Gasly here. So it's not all bad. Uh, Ocon is running damage. Hamilton's running, well, not damage, lower end tires. So, potentially, this is going to kind of work out to our, I hope, advantage. 
And the goal is going to be to catch potentially Ocon and Hamilton. Hamilton is going to be a bit of a, you know, bigger fish to, ca to catch. It's probably going to be a little bit too difficult for us. But Ocon should be potentially doable here. And even then, if we just stay in 9th uh, or even 10th, that is still a huge win at this stage. So we are definitely happy with how things are currently going. We're just waiting for it to become a little bit more, you know, wet out there again. And then we're going to start pushing these tires a little bit more aggressively towards the end. There we go. It's become damp. And we're going to tune it up to aggressive. And if the tire heat doesn't get too high, we're going to tune it up again, up again to attack. And we're probably going to do that for the last few laps as well. Because it is just going to become wetter and wetter. Which will help cool these tires down. Allowing us to run a little bit more aggressive strategies here. So, last lap, we ran... About a second quicker than Ocon. So within the next six laps, we're going to be catching him. And in terms of Hamilton, we are running about five tenths quicker. So it's not a massive amount, but five tenths uh, with just about eight seconds behind. We have enough laps to just barely catch him. So potentially yeah, we could get Hamilton too if we are lucky and we don't get stuck behind Ocon. So we'll do our best here and see what we can do. And again, safety car safety car there is a car in the wall it's so alonso that's in the wall too so everyone is going to pit behind that safety okay. car for sure uh, i okay. think i think we will come out ahead of safety car. both hamilton and Ocon now Follow because the they are going to pit there's just no no way they're not okay hamilton's so in the pit Ocon's in the pit well but we will come out ahead of them but the main problem right now is that the gap that we have had uh, for so long we are not going to be able to enjoy anymore, but we should be able to just go attack to the end. And it is harder to overtake in, you know, the wet. So we are going to gamble and still make this work. The, the, the tire advantage they have won't be huge. So again, we are going to gamble and make this work. Fortunately for Alonso, he actually kind of screws us over there. Because as I said, I think we would have caught at least Ocon and maybe Hamilton without a safety car. So... We'll just get everything ready because you can change these under safety car. Uh, it doesn't seem like your driver will push more than they're allowed, if so. So let us see here now if we can get a good restart and work from there. And I, I, I know that I said that this series is going to be mainly focused on development, but we have a chance at our points. So I just want to show you how I'm playing the game when we, well, have those opportunities. So again, we have put, put four upgrades on this car. And they have worked out pretty well. In this lap. For the so, restart, we will need we race. Get... Yep. Yes. Frigus uh, uh, run there from Bodas, got away from Hamilton. Still getting away from Hamilton. Uh, kind of impressed by how well he's getting away from Hamilton. <laughs> so yeah, that is looking very promising. Uh, we are going to tune down the tires probably a little bit then. Now we can run aggressively to the end. That should not be an issue. Uh, the main concern right now is, of course having energy to battle because Hamilton is now up into up behind us here and is probably going to attack us uh, and that is actually a dangerous position to be in because well he could always lock up and kill us but we will push this again these tires uh they overcook at 105 so going aggressive it might be for the best particularly now that we're behind uh again once you go over into severe overheating you kind of start losing a little bit more performance Three laps to go here. We will definitely take the seventh place and be happy with it. Honestly, it's where we qualified. But we have had a lot of luck here, let's be honest. Um, except for show. The, both Astons are out. Hulkenberg. We probably finished ninth without that. So still, best of the rest. But we'll definitely take a little bit extra help we got here. Honestly, I think we're just going to run this final stint on standard. Cool it down a little bit. Because, again, we are not overtaking Hamilton uh, or anyone ahead of us with just one lap and two seconds deficit. So I would really just like to get home safely, which we did. And today's winner. That's a pretty good start to this uh, challenge of ours. Race That's 3, we have already scored points. So Bonas there with six points is going to put us into a yeah, pretty good position here. We're now up into sixth, which means that the board shouldn't really have any complaints with us. Of course, William scoring points there is not great for us. Um, has probably would have been a better choice, but Alpine is also fine. So this is actually looking uh, pretty much okay for us here. Uh, we don't even show up on the uh, scoreboard here for quickest pit stop though, so we do need to work on those. 
Uh, I am curious though about just how much damage Shell's car suffered, and that's going to be a massive potential problem for us. Uh, in terms of just, as I said, how hard he took that hit. So, let us have a look here on the report. Driver development update. Uh, what is where he was. Show got a point in reaction to smoothness. I did change these guys over to a long pace. So they can work on safe smoothness. Because it is a fairly important stat. Board only has medium confidence in us. That is kind of painful to hear. And let us check the car part inspection results. So our suspension failed. That's fine. It's gone three races. He destroyed a gearbox for absolute show. Uh, destroyed about a little bit of an engine, a little bit of the ERS here. But suspension, front wing, and chassis. It's low. It's basically against standard chassis, so it's not a big problem, honestly. Uh, but again, the uh, the damage done to mainly the uh, mainly the gearbox and the race components is going to be a bit of a bit of a concern here, uh, particularly because, well. We kind of need these to do our stuff. So most likely we are potentially going to have to buy him a new engine. We do need to get him the new parts so that he, you know, doesn't destroy everything that we give him. And currently in terms of what we're going to be getting, we have already gotten all of our things. We can do some manufacturing here. Uh, I think what we want to get him is side pods as soon as possible. As Baku is in 25 days. And in terms of what we have to manufacture here, we have 22 days before the next project comes out. Uh, we are going to need, I believe... No, we're not going to need any time for that, so that is fine. But we're just going to have a quick look at where we're at. Got the suspension, got the underfloor, side pods, the rear wing. Uh, we're running out of front wings, maybe. So what I'm thinking that we're going to do here is make a chassis as a start. We're also going to make a side pod, and we're going to put them on uh, Joe's car to get that engine cooling kind of up. And that should help us. I'm just going to quickly set up the pit stop crew. Or, of course, gym training. That's kind of what we just need them to do. And uh, that should be fine here. Now, for Baku, as I said, we probably are going to have a little bit of a problem. Because our car is very top speed limited. It's basically our biggest weakness. It's our top speed. Uh, last race around didn't matter too much because it was raining. That helped us out in uh, kind of disguising that weakness. So... We'll have to see how it turns out at Baku. I don't think we're going to get points there. Unless, of course, the Alphas decide to... Sorry, not the Alphas. The Astons decide to have Civil War. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see exactly how we do it. Because again, we're not going to get any of these parts out in time. The suspension is just a no-no. Uh, not even if we rush it. We're going to be running the next race on the same components that we're running right now. Okay, regulation mode. It is airflow or cooling focus changes. Um... I think we'll take the airflow changes here. And I'm thinking about next season because basically there is a bug currently with research where even if you move the sliders, the research will act as if they were all in the middle. And that kind of puts the AI in a bad position because they have they just can't deal with it. And it means that you will always have a huge advantage when it comes to uh when it comes to your research. Give sponsor obligation. Uh what exactly is the sponsor obligation? I think we're just going to, you know, send show there. It's fine. It's 14 days into the next race. It's going to lose a little bit of morale. I honestly think it's fine. Chassis has been manufactured, but I probably should start two new projects, to be fair. Uh, probably get that rear wing for show, for sure. That's going to help out. And the underfloor. Honestly, we're going to put these parts on show's car when we can. But it's not something we're going to always do. Mainly because, well, we can't. So, we'll keep that in mind. Red Wing has been manufactured. We are going to be making more Red Wings, as I said. I think we actually have one in, you know, the cooking right now. Red Wings will be 20 days. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be making more than what we have already. Again, we are being kind of... Not really passive, but just saving up here. So, we did get the airflow focus changes, and we'll have to deal with them next season. It's going to hit everything. And airflow in this case is again mainly a multiplier or basically makes more use of your cornering ability from your downforce, but it is actually kind of important. Yeah, boxy ball condition is fine. We'll switch it for the race. Now we do have that new suspension ready. 
and low speed cornering is kind of critical here. So we could go ahead and again kind of emergency manufacture this just to kind of start fighting for points early. It's going to cost us 1.2 million. Uh, if we rush it, we'll have it for Sunday, but that won't matter because, well, you lock in your car on Friday because of the sprint. So if we want this, we're going to have to emergency manufacture one. And it could actually help out a ton there because we get brake cooling too. So I think we are going to do this. Um, it's not going to be, again, I'm not going to do this a lot, but particularly in this this case, it actually is a good idea. And we'll just get one more manufactured normally. That's what the next design we should make is. Uh, it's a little bit hard to decide. Your suspension is actually a really good bet if you just get this thing up and running. It's going to really help you out in the long run. So I think we're just going to make another design. Don't know if we're going to use said design, but we're going to make another one. And as you can see, we are gaining a little bit in each stat, but it's still going to take a long time before this is going to start paying off. So we'll do this for now. Then we'll do maybe side ports again, chassis, and work from there. Underfloor design complete. Uh, we are going to, if we can, manufacture that immediately. We could, of course, also emergency manufacture one of these because they too have a pretty decent stat gain. Won't really boost us too much against the other teams, but we'll help with that top speed. We'll help with a little bit of dirty air tolerance. So uh, since we are kind of on the emergency manufacturing tour, we can emergency manufacture this one again. And as I said, just cut down on the total parts that we manufacture. We're going to be living kind of on the edge as a result. But it should be okay. So we'll make one more emergency there. And we'll make the other one normally. Although we probably won't need to. Now with that, we are actually going to immediately also go ahead and design a new one. But before that, I want to kind of put these new parts on the car one. So we can see where we're at. Put the suspension on. Put the underfloor on. And I think that is what we had so far. Yes, there we are. And with that, our car one is looking a lot better. It's getting up there. And we are going to, as I said, design one more underfloor because we have used so much CFD time on it. And as you can see, even with the current underfloor that we have equipped, this is still going to be a pretty sizable boost because of the fact that we have used CFD time. And I didn't mention this earlier. Probably should have, to be fair. But the way the CFT time works is that it adds for each unit of CFT used. In this case, uh, each one of these is a unit, so 57, 56 here. For each of these units added, you get an extra day of expertise gain, meaning that you basically put, in this case, almost half a year's worth of expertise into one cycle, which gives you, of course, massive boost to your part. So we could, of course, do one more iteration of this, but still with CFD. But we'll have to see if that is going to be worth it or not. It's kind of a, you know, difficult thing to estimate. We could, once again, just focus on the, uh, the you know, cornering aspect. But again, this is kind of your workhorse, so I'm going to keep it balanced for now. And this is, as I said, probably the last underfloor we'll make. And then we'll probably do a rear wing, just to boost our DRS effectiveness. And then maybe consider doing some research before next year. So here we are, the sign is going to go in the cooker. After this race, about a week after, we're going to have that front wing. It is a bit late though, and we're actually going to have Miami right after. So we won't have it for the race itself, but we'll have, uh, well, what we currently have, which should be a decent, pretty decent setup for Miami. Now, we are going to gamble on being able to get, probably not fastest lap, but one car in Q3, one in top 10. Because again, having more money can't hurt. But we are also going to have to, as I said, manage the cost cap here because we are down to 80 million. We have about 40 more, 40 more million we can spend on development. Or we're going to have to try and focus a little bit more towards the research part. So with that in mind, let's go to the sprint weekend and see if we can score some more points. Right, performance is definitely here. As you can see, Bordas managed to get 8th again. Uh, we also got no most of the parts now for show. He's still lacking the suspension though. He's not fully there. But even then, he had times that were, well, kind of comparable. He's 5 tenths. Well, let's face it, not really that comparable. He's four tenths to seven tenths behind here, but again, he does have worse stats. He's still lacking a piece, but Bonas is actually doing pretty well, all things considered. I think we can take this as kind of a win. So right now it's going really well. We're going to be starting eighth and twelfth 
but it's going to be potentially starting in a uh, point scoring position here for the sprint. And that could be that could be huge. Now, I didn't get the best setups here, of course, but that is what it is. And of course, for sure, too, we have been giving him a new engine. We had to give him a new gearbox because, well, the other one is completely broken. So we're just going to quickly send through practice here. And then we're going to jump into the sprint itself. Now, for the Baku sprint, you can gamble on softs. Uh, it's actually not a problem to do so. Because usually you will have a safety car, a virtual safety car, or some shenanigans We're happening back. during that short, well, sprint race around this lap, well, around this track, that usually causes some sort of mayhem. And again, you can run attack, no problem as well. So basically, we're going to be running attack unless we overheat the tires to the point where we really start losing performance. And we are going to do what we did last time. We're just going to go full attack, full fuel usage, full ERS usage, and we're also going to go ahead and here and switch out that yellow engine. Now, uh, Mike Takumi did some testing in terms of how damaging a yellow car part is in this game, and generally figured out that it, it's about a tenth in terms of lap time. So it's not too bad to run yellows in this game. Last year it was really punishing, but in this year you can this year this game you can do it in this year's game without getting, as I said, too many punishments your way. And as you can see here, we have, as I said, level two for everything except for that suspension. So. He's lacking quite a bit of, as you see, low-speed cornering here, which would, of course, benefit him greatly, as well as that brake cooling. So we'll have to see here. We might need to tune them to aggressive as we go. But generally, I think that we have a pretty decent idea here, and we're starting the sprint. Now's the time for the sprint here in Baku. So everyone is on the softs, as you can see. They softs across the board. So we're basically running equal to everyone else. And we will again just tune on the balances there. Kinda looked like we had damage there immediately from someone. But right now it's looking good. We do have Strollo kind of attacking us. And honestly, it would be kind of a impressive feat if we were able to hold on to our position during this uh, sprint. I don't think we're going to get points. But maybe a finish near the top 10 would be good. Show is... Well, I was just about to show us a good job holding on to his position. But then he fell down. So again... Main goal here will be to, again, just get into top 10-ish position. The other cars are going to be quicker than us. We are basically going to be fighting for 9th and 10th going forwards. But seeing that we just want 7th from the board, that is plenty for basically our boys here to uh, to get going with. Now, we are just going to quickly check what kind of tire temps we can expect here. Overheating is... Severe overheating, that is. It's 120 degrees. So we are running more than... More than good enough on, uh, well, the aspects here. So we do, I did kind of forget about the RS, which is probably going to punish Boras here, with Ocon overtaking him on the straight. Again, top street is our main weakness here, so we're probably going to have a bad time. Unless, well, what just happened, happened. So there we go. Kind of as expected here, we did have a crash. Russell has crashed with someone. Stroll and Russell come together, which is... It's not that surprising so for this track. I don't know if any of them are out though. Looks like they just kind of tapped each other lightly. And yeah, neither are out. But you can Watch imagine that they are going to potentially have to fix their ties. Nope. Looks like Stroll is good. Lost about 10%. Russell is good too. So no worries for them. We are going to be fighting Oko now potentially for 7th though. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 7th. That could be a little bit more, you know, of importance. And as of course, show is still just falling backwards, unfortunately, but that is kind of what we expected. So for now, we are just going to speed things along and we'll see where we're at towards the end. For now, though, as I said, what as main goal here would just straight up be to fight with Ocon towards the end of this race and see if we can hold on to this seventh place of ours. We're on the final lap here and we have actually fallen down a bit, as you can see here. We've been overtaken by Gasly. We haven't actually been able to keep up the fight with Ocon. Alpine is just a tad too quick for us. We are going to try and get something done now, though. Uh, but as you can see, the Alpines are kind of running, kind of running and blocking here. So that makes it more or less impossible. So it is a bit unfortunate, but that is how it is. We are going to give Show though, his deploy. See if we can get it up to the 14th. But the Alpine has basically been running like this for the last three or so laps. They've just been switching on the uh, main straight. So it's a bit unfortunate, but we won't be getting any points here. Uh, it is what it is. Sprints only give points up to 8th place. But we are 
pretty quick around so Merrick. And we are now in a position that where I think we can actually start fighting the Alphines for that final post scoring position. Which should be, you know, available for us to fix, to get into, potentially, uh, within the two tenths places here. But of course, we did have Stroll and Russell both uh, caught some damage, so that is basically helping us a lot here. And we'll be setting up now for the full race itself. And again, we're basically just going to use the same strategy. Soft does something great too quickly here. So what we could do is, of course, this. Go full attack with this strategy. It's going to save us about 42 seconds. Uh, we could also do uh, medium, medium, hard, and go super aggressive, even with that. And let's see how we can do this, make this work. That would be about 43 seconds. Let's say that if we start on the softs, go another soft, and then go a medium. Would that be any quicker? Would be a little bit quicker. And again, we don't really have too many, too much life in these mediums. Uh, sorry, softs, unfortunately. So it could work. And... It should be slightly quicker, but of course that is dependent on us not getting stuck behind any other cars after pitting. So I think we're going to be a little bit careful here, a little bit risky, because that, I think that this is probably the best strategy. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we are going to have probably a safety car too. Now, Shoei actually do ha does have two fresh sets. Um, so what we could do here for Bodass is actually switch one of those soft sets to another medium set and balance things out a little bit like this it gives us a little bit more freedom to attack and potentially be better so start on softs run two sets of mediums and that should be okay of course doing one stop here is also very viable so really say that it's not like we shouldn't do it but we're gonna do this two sets of mediums one set of softs and we'll just try and balance it as best as we can this does look kind of good. Let's see if we move that backwards. Nope. It was actually the sweet spot. So these are the strategies we're going to be running for both of them. They'll be on the same strategy. Luckily enough, they are far enough apart that we shouldn't have them hit each other. But we'll jump in the race here. And again, the goal here will be trying to score some points for Bodass. And uh, it's a bit unfortunate with the sprint there that we couldn't make it work. It's the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And it slides out. Away we go. It is lights out. Away we go. Let's see here. Uh, there is a lot of medium runs ahead of us, so potentially we could take advantage of those. We'll have to see. But we'll try and not use all of our uh, energy here this time around. We're still going to use ERS Ballasis. It is just a nice little toggle, toggleable. So that is perfectly okay. We are going to be pushing as set energy for about one more lap until we get the ERS to kind of keep ourselves attached to the cars in front with. So 37, 37, we'll go ahead and put it into neutral. We don't use too much. Bodass and show are both uh, within rooms of the car in front. So there's no need to push too aggressively. Bodass has even gone by Ocon here. Gonna try and hunt down Gasly. And the more room we well, the more places we make up now, the better it's gonna be for later. But as you can see that we lose a lot of time on the main straight because we are fairly slow. Yes, now we immediately have a virtual safety car, done. stroll with another incident. Guess he isn't going to take out one of the other cars this time around, maybe. But yeah, that should be him out. Just a puff of smoke crash. And the thing is now, you can tune this down, but you don't really need to anymore under the VSC. Kind of handles it normally on its own, though it's not a biggie. But uh, we're going to keep on pushing, and we'll see where we're at around the first set. Uh, well, the first set of uh, pit stops. And we will deploy. Just a little bit here, try and catch up to, as I said, Hamilton in this case. Apparently, Yas has got the overtake done. And we do want to be within DRS of these boys, because the higher of the track we're in DRS, the more of an advantage we're going to have in the long run. So hopefully, with the energy that we have, with the fuel, with the tires push here, we can have Bodas catch up to Hamilton. And as you can see, it looks very much uh, possible here. That is going to be that's going to be key. We will, of course, try and get show up as high as we can as well. But he is going to be a bit of a lesser priority, just simply because, well, the main point score here is going to be Bodas for us. It's just that simple. Bodas is going to be the priority due to that. So as I said, I'll speed things along until the next pit stop, and we'll see where we stand once we get there. We have a safety car deployed here, uh, basically right before we're about to pit, and it is a Red Bull in the wall. It is Paris who is out. So we are going to be pitting both our cars here uh, under the safety car. There is enough of a gap to make that work. 
so that we'll take advantage of said safety car and pit both our boys. So that is a little bit lucky for us. Totally sure what's also, happened. of course, Seems the fact that Paris Paris, is usually a guaranteed point scorer will give us an even better shot at getting some good points here. So that is a bit lucky. Uh, did kind of collect a little bit too quick there, so we skipped everything. But this safety car could really play right into our hands. I don't assume everyone, actually everyone did fit, so kind of just a reset here. Show comes out in 11. And a lot of cars have actually gone onto the hards, which kind of would hint to them staying on those hards until the end of the race. So potentially here, if we can stay with, say, Leclerc and Alonso, this could be huge if you can get the grabs created. Now, Bottas does have a yellow symbol here. It's basically just his engine having turned into the minor stage, losing us a little bit of time. I should probably switch it out before the, uh, the race itself, but it is what it is. Now, we'll just speed things along here to the restart itself. Uh, gonna have you have a bit of a look at it, but as you can see here, uh, tight attempts to manage. We aren't really losing anything in terms of durability while running behind the safety car, so there's no problem not tuning it down. Uh, let's see here. Safety car is ending, so we'll give them push and we'll give them deploy. And we'll see here now if Bodas can, with this restart, maybe get a jump or say Alonso. It's gonna be a bit difficult, of course. But if we can, it would be amazing to say run with Verstappen and the Ferraris. Uh, Alonso isn't no slouch either. He's pretty quick on those mediums. So if we can create a gap to Hamilton, that is going to be absolutely divine. But Bottas is now kind of falling behind uh, Alonso, which isn't that surprising. Alonso should be quite a lot quicker than we are. So not surprising. Maybe after they stop pushing, we might be able to uh, catch up with him. But, okay. Or if they crash. <laughs> and that works. <laughs> uh, what exactly happened here? They took each other out. That is unfortunate. Now, Alonso is out. Yes. Can't see if Verstappen is out. Verstappen is fine. Follow your delta. So... Yeah, that is kind of problematic, but it puts us into a very interesting position here where we kind of have to try our best now. So, honestly, I don't think anything's going to happen during the VSC restart. If it does, I'm going to come back to you here. We can have a quick look. And our goal here is going to be still to just ending? stay with Hamilton, get away from the rest of the pack before we do that second pit stop. Although that final pit stop is probably going to be back onto the softs just because of the durability that we have saved up here. And yeah, looks like we got a clean restart. So let's see where we're at once we get to that final pit stop, if we can stay with Hamilton or not. We're getting very close to that second pit stop, but at the same time, um, don't know if I want to risk it and stay out or not. And if we have a quick look here at the strategy, can actually edit this as we see fit. Let's say that we were to go on to, uh, you know, the softs right now, would that be more beneficial or would uh, going on to the mediums be more beneficial. What is the consensus here? That they're about equal. Okay. So with that in mind, I think we just go on the softs. The softs should get the job done, even though they're all the softs for uh, Valtteri here. And again, it is kind of a gamble. It is 15 laps to go. Uh, in terms of the gaps here, it's not too great down to show there. And in terms of what you need here, in terms of just uh, stop times, we can actually have a quick look. And we are going to need about 20 seconds, 22 seconds. So we are going to be pitting Valtteri here. But again, we are going to have to get through all of these guys. We could probably run our mediums a little bit more careful, but we we'll just have to start a bit earlier if you want to do that. Also, we have now mine away on the gearbox as well. So that really could, you know, throw a wrench into the plants. But we will go ahead here and put him onto a new set of softs. And hopefully we'll be able to get through the traffic quick enough that it won't really affect him. So we're going to do the same here for show, put him onto a new set of uh, softs as well. Well, he has the newest set, so to speak. But I think that is the best bet that we have right now. We are starting to lose out a little bit to Hamilton in terms of keeping up. So we don't really have a choice. But as comes out just ahead of Magnussen, which is great. Show comes out in 15th. Uh, but still, we are going to have a bit of a DRS train there to deal with. But I think that should be doable with these new fresh soft tires. And hopefully we can maybe make our way up to say Gasly again. 
Now, Sho is going to have a bit of a harder time because, well, he isn't as well placed as Vodas currently is. But at the same time, I think it should be it should be doable for sure. Now, Vodas is about to catch up to uh, Norris here. Ocon and Norris, honestly. So let's go a little bit aggressive here. And I am going to gamble on putting this up too high. I might regret that very soon. But it should make overtaking getting back into that position where we want to be a little bit easier. So if we can keep ahead of Norris here for this stretch, we should pull out of DRS. And we have the bonus now is basically uh, four seconds behind fourth place, which is Hulkenberg at the moment. And then we can actually start, you know, see if we can chase down Hamilton to the last 10 laps here. We're running about 1.6 seconds quicker. We are about 10 seconds behind. So if we keep this up, Bottas is going to be in strike position where he can actually cause some damage to... Uh, not really cause some damage, but potentially catch Hamilton before the end of this race. So it's really, really, potentially a pretty big one. Now, running attack is, well, take more risks here. It's kind of dangerous, but we are peak confidence, which should put that back to the very low. But right now, Bottas is a machine, and he is doing an incredibly good job. Unfortunately, as I said, because of that, we are going to be sacrificing show a little bit, but we are also going to be helping him when we have the, you know, sense of mind to do so. Bottas now, nine seconds, eight laps, still running, almost a second quicker. Can he do it? Can he push hard enough here? that he catches Hamilton and we get our first podium in Baku because that would actually be straight up insanity if we did. Uh, but of course we are heavily helped here by Verstappen crashing, by Alonso Perez and Stroll crashing. So in reality here, this is actually just, you know, a fight for seventh, really. But we are we are lucky here. Yeah, Russell's also a little bit out of position and that does help. Now, Sho does actually have very high confidence, so I'm going to go against my better judgment here and give him the attack command because if he can get by these guys, I think he might be able to catch Magnussen. And getting show some points would do him good. Now, we are still running about a second quicker than Hamilton. So catching him is not impossible. We're on basically the sixth lap, meaning that once we cross the line, there'll still be five laps remaining. So it's definitely possible that we can catch him and potentially overtake him before the end of this race. And again, it would be pretty amazing if we did. Our show would just is struggling a bit to get by because mainly because we are mainly because we are lacking top speed so we'll have to see how we do that now for Bodas, i'm actually going to have him deploy i'm going to have him push and see if we can close down that gap a little bit more this lap because we need to get within drs may hopefully uh on the final lap at the very least so that we can overtake him on this stretch otherwise we are going to have a bit of a hard time to get things uh get things done here so Need to chop chop speed up if we want to catch him. Last lap we gained a little bit over a second, 1.4 to be exact. Show has gotten, uh, well, Albin. Hopefully we can get Tsunoda as well. Should get him on this lap and then it will depend on if he can, you know, get those five seconds of Magnuson. Uh, Magnuson is running old hearts, so it's possible, but it's going to have a pretty bad, uh, not bad time per se, but a pretty hard time with it. So, Bodas is kind of the same here. Running behind Hamilton, three seconds off. We'll see if we can make something happen. Our show is actually having problems getting by. We'll give him the push. Uh, because again, our car isn't really good on the straight. You can probably see it here with Hamilton right now. So, this is three laps to go. We can still get it done, but I'm pretty sure Hamilton now is pushing his tires a little bit more aggressively, which is going to make it harder for us to catch up. And that is going to, as I said, make it quite a bit more difficult to uh, to catch up with him. I'm just going to tune him down because I'm afraid that I will forget about him. But with this, we can actually just speed things up because, as I said, we're not going to be catching Hamilton here. It just isn't possible. We just aren't quick enough. And unfortunately, Show here did kind of fall out of the points because of the pitting and not being able to catch up to the cars in front. I don't think he's going to get Magnus and he's just a tad too far away. So honestly, now we can actually tune down this high usage a little bit, uh, ease up a little bit here. Of course, if we have crashes, that could change the kind of dynamic right now. 
but I think for the time being it is okay. We are gonna have Shogo a little bit more attack though, because we know that is coming is fairly aggressively winner. back at us. And that will be the checkered flag. And he might we actually get us before the line. Yeah, nope. Good face. That was a beautiful race for us, but again, there should be four cars uh, ahead of us with those included. So in reality, this would have been an 8th place, but it would still be ahead of the Alphines. And we did beat Mercedes. So honestly, we'll take this. It's huge for us, a huge amount of haul of points. Shame it for sure that he didn't get into the points himself, but that was still a good effort. And again, he is lacking that suspension, gives him uh, low cornering. But basically, if you run attack, the top speed isn't that much of a concern, as you can see. The main thing you want is actually cornering ability, as it helps you out. And as we go, we are going to increase our energy cooling, we are going to increase our brake cooling, and we're going to increase our dirty air a little bit. But I think for the time being that we aren't going to be focusing much onto the uh, the um, top speed aspect. We're going to sacrifice top speed in order to, in this season, have a bit of a fight with, uh, fight for that 7th place, well, 6th place in this case, that the board wants. We're going to have to pay board as 20k for finishing 4th. That is absolutely fine by me. We get a decent chunk of the monies. And I think that kind of tells us where we are. We are probably going to be having a good time this season. I'll be making a couple more parts for this. Basically, mainly to, on the development side. To help out there. On how we're going to progress the car from here. But uh, I think that is basically the end of this first episode, so to speak. Uh, as I said, I might... I probably will make more. But... As you've seen here, um, let's be fair, it's kind of mad by the safety cars, by the crashes. But generally, with these five upgrades, you are going to be able to fight for points already come Baku by using aggressive strategies. Now, again, some people might look at the aggressive strategies as more of a cheese, not really fair to the AI. But honestly, it is part of the game. Uh, you probably should be punished more for running aggressive. I agree with that. But this is how you can do it. Now, I might redo this while running, say, only standard aggressive strategies, not allowed to use attack. But this is basically how you do it. Run attack, make sure that you upgrade those four pieces. Prioritize Bottas, because he is going to be your quickest driver by far. Bottas is going to be far more stable. He's going to be having a much better chance of getting higher up in the points, because he already has the high starting points. And if you can get him that P confidence, he is going to be a potential podium for you pretty early on. Well, in this case, again, we were lucky. This would probably have been a 5 for asset 7th, maybe. But even then, it's it's a bit... It is potential here for within one more round of upgrades. You potentially have Bodas fighting for, you know, top 4 on a more regular basis. Now, I've said this before, but we could have a quick look at car analysis, but this isn't completely accurate right now. Because the AI has damaged cars. Um... But generally, we are potentially a midfield car already. We just need to do, as I said, a couple more upgrades. And we do have that front point coming in. We have Raven coming in. But both of those are going to be up to Miami. So we'll see how it goes next time around. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. If you want to see more, please let me know by liking the video. And uh, yeah, hope to see you all next time. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Helps me out a ton. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And uh See you next time. Bye-bye.